Hello everyone and welcome to Film Companion South. We are doing an Ask BR on SPB, which is actually a bit of a, a strange thing because, you know, you it seems like we are mourning someone who, in a sense, is gone, but in a sense is always going to be with us and forever and ever. I'm going to take this first question by Manisha Kakani. She says, Balu Garu holds a very special place in the lives of Telugu audiences. It has become a ritual for all of us to watch him every week on Parduthi Yoga for the past 24 years. His expressions, his childish smile and reactions to songs, we miss him terribly. Uh, yes, in that sense, yes, he will definitely be missed because as a live presence on TV or on his YouTube show, uh, uh, we did get a sense of the SPB apart from the person who was singing all those great songs. But yes, as a singer, his songs are going to live forever and ever because, uh, you know, he fortunately was was recorded a lot and his recordings have stayed more importantly unlike the really old singers from the 40s and early 50s their recordings are lost forever that's never going to happen with SPB so as long as technology exists SPB is going to exist so in a way we can be grateful for that. Madan Mohan asks was SPB acting to his voice as convincing more than his playback for actors like Kamal Rajini Mohan related was Mohan the actor for whom his voice fit best this is something a lot of people have asked and I'm not really sure because see he was a very good actor, right? SPB was a very good voice actor. So, um, but in a sense, all the songs that we, that we listen to, we know retroactively that X person has acted or Y person has acted. But I think the strength of it is he kind of, with Mohan and Kamal especially, his voice just fit in beautifully. So those little things that he does, those sheshtes or whatever you want to call them, they suit both these actors very well because they're kind of mellowish kind of actors. Whereas with Rajini, I can also find a very good fit in Malaysia Vasudevan. There was a, like a fantastic fit between uh, Rajini's uh, voice and uh, Malaysia Vasudevan's voice acting. Uh, I thought that was like a, like a great thing, apart from SPB, of course. So whether SPB brought something extra when he was singing for all these people, definitely, that is true. But whether, you know, our recognition of these songs as SPB is doing a Mohan in the song is coming from our knowledge or whether it was really that I don't know how to go back and retroactively look at that because a song like Sangeeta Megam is so firmly established in my mind as a Mohan song that when SPB sings it I'm automatically remembering Mohan in that song so I don't know how to kind of do that thing but there is no doubt that he brought in special he added something that secret sauce that he had he added to every song of his made us feel that he was evoking the actor and I think that is really, really fantastic. Anbu Kumaran asks, while TMS PV cinemas were ruling, did SPV's soft voice bring in tenderness to the melodies in Tamil film that audiences are gravitating towards soft voices even today? Two things here. One is SPV came in a little after uh, TMS and PBS were ruling, so to speak. Uh, and the second thing is, I would call AM Raja, PBS soft voices. They were not like TMS's voice or Sirgari Govindarajan's voice. So they were soft voices earlier, but I think they we lack both AM Raja and PBS had a certain nasal quality to their voices, right? I think SVB is probably the first singer who kind of had the softness to his voice, that that velvety softness that that you know we heard for the first time. Uh, because even uh, when you talk of velvet, you also think of Yeshudas. But Yeshudas is, is a is a more baritonish kind of velvet, right? It's like a it's a stronger. Uh, like like kind of velvet whereas SPB is so casual so conversational he sounds like like somebody who's singing so easily you know that that ease with which his songs seem to appear without like you know uh, when you when an SPB song comes when a TMS song comes or a Yesuda song comes right even though it may have the same level of complexity you feel that you can probably sing the SPB song whereas you might kind of think that you might not be able to sing the, the TMS song or the Yesudas or the Sirgari. Simply a perception because the voice ranges are a little intimidating. Whereas even though SPB is doing the same kind of amazing stuff in his songs and they are all technically accomplished and he's also very te technically accomplished, the casualness of, of his singing kind of makes it feel that, wow, we can also hum that song, we can also sing that song. You know, I think that's a quality that, that we brought, got for the first time in Tamil film music from uh, SPB. Prakar Jain asks, how do you explain the legacy of SPB to a teenager? I really wish youngsters get to understand him. Uh, well, Prakar, I don't know because uh, there are a lot of people and singers that I wish to expose to uh, younger listeners, but uh, A, they should have the interest and B, they should have the patience because every time somebody makes a blanket statement like, uh, you know, X composer gave the best songs for SVB or Y composer is the best or, or you know, like like a TMS is greater than SVB, SVB is greater than TMS, all these things. 
you know, you just, you know that it's coming from a place where people haven't listened enough to uh, the music to kind of, you know, when, when, um, when they're making these blanket statements that sometimes are so ridiculous. So I think, you know, first let's get to a place where we encourage people to listen to as much as possible, right? And then uh, kind of, let's say, you know, you know how I would imagine this is people just go and YouTube is there, YouTube is your friend. So go and listen to, uh, let's say every day you listen to one old song, right? One pre your birth song. If you were born in the 90s, then an 80s song. If you were born in the 80s, then a 70s or 60s song. Just listen to one, one every two days, whatever it is. So at least three times a week, six times a week, you get exposed to a music that is not your music, right? Again, you don't have to like this music, right? But you'll at least know the things that were done then. So it was like every time we say that somebody did it first, nine out of ten times, there is a ch very strong chance that somebody else has done it. Maybe not to this level, but in a similar way earlier. So it's always great to go back. I know this is not an SPV specific answer, but I just like, you know, I'm just every time somebody passes away from the golden age, I just get so worried that that their legacy is going to kind of, uh, you know, maybe in, in 40, 50 years, you know, they won't be there and we'll just be looking at newer and newer and newer singers. Uh, so that's always a fear. And I think this is something that I'm kind of saying to address that fear. Uh, Satvik says, uh, among the music directors SPB sir worked in these 40 plus years, a well-known collaboration has been with Raja sir. Apart from this combo, which music director has got the best out of SPB sir? There is no question that it was MS Vishwanathan because MS Vishwanathan is the one who uh, kind of took SPB in the early days and discovered that, of course, both Yeshudas and uh, SPB were coming up around the same time. Yeshudas is much senior, of course. But, but in terms of, you know, success, I think they kind of had parallel tracks. And uh, MSV really, really, really found an alternative to the TMS kind of voice that is using. And he was able to give such tonality and texture to his songs that he was not able to in the years that he was doing uh, music with Ramamurti and a little after that also, which is not to say that that's a very different kind of song is all I'm saying, not comparing the two eras at all. But, but he just like, it's almost like these two, this composer and the singer, they kind of infused you know, life into each other. And, and I would say that a large part of SVB being SVB is due to MS Vishnathan because that voice grooming, that voice acting, you know, how to do the Sangrati is all those kinds of things. That is a lot of it came from MSV songs because they're all voice songs, singer songs. That's like, that's like, you know, pure, you have to be a great singer in order to pull off those songs. It's not enough if you're an average singer, you have to be a great singer. And I think greatness came to SVB because of this whole bunch of uh, 70s MSV songs. Ashutosh Mohan asks, uh, his formidable talent is surely a reason for the number of songs and the number of languages, but what external circumstances in various film industries facilitated this? Why have great singers before and after not been able to replicate this very specific type of success? First of all, there are more number of films being made, right, which means more number of songs. Then second thing is, his voice is also this amazing voice that fits almost every kind of actor. So you, you cannot imagine a TMS kind of voice sitting on a Kamal, for instance, you know, but you can imagine uh, SPB sitting on a, like a, you know, almost every kind of actor out there. So I think that, 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 you know, when you go to Canada, he's, he's acting out like, like Shankar Nag, Anand Nag, everybody is like, like, you know, when they sing his songs, they sound like they are, the voice is sitting on this person perfectly. But more importantly, I think there was, you know, the proliferation of technology, right? First, there's only radio, then there's radio plus TV, then there's radio plus TV plus all these other things. SVB and Yeshudas and all these other people are the first generation of singers that have been enshrined through technology. That is, you no longer have to search out uh, songs uh, in order to, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, find SVB songs. Another thing is, today, when on the, on the onset of technology, you have people mainly, they go back maybe as far as Yelay Raja, they definitely don't go, go back beyond that, right? So, let's say somebody is a, is a really fantastic Yelay Raja fan, right? and they are downloading Ira Raja hits or something like that. Now, when 60% of the songs belong to SPB, you, that's the voice that, that stays with you, right? Ira Raja does not work much with TMS. So, you, when 60% of the songs are staying with you because this voice is something that's coming through you through the composer that you love. A lot of factors like this have kind of ensured that SPB, apart from, of course, his phenomenal SPB-ness itself, a lot of these other factors have made him kind of the preeminent singer of his era. Existential Crisis asks, despite him being a native Telugu singer, how did he manage to find such huge admirers in Tamil Nadu who are the toughest set of people to win the loyalty 
Really, I, I don't think so. Uh, TMS is not a Tamilian. Uh, P. Sushila is not a Tamilian. Uh, there are so many people who are not Tamilians and who become phenomenal, uh, phenomenally loved people in Tamil Nadu. So I don't know if this is uh, really something that that Tamil people say that we will listen to uh, people only with uh, you know pure uh, who have pure Tamil roots or something like that. No, I don't think so at all. Tirukumar Tyagaraja says I think no other singer emoted as well as SPB did. He literally became those characters and made the emotions of each song so much more real for the listener to feel and emulate. Yeah, truly, no, it's like uh, that that softness of his voice. You know, that's what I was talking about. Uh, you know, even in the piece that I wrote. Uh, you feel that that he's so approachable like a friend not like a like a like a thing like you know when when you look at the same msv you look at the same karnadasan but you look at two different generation of philosophical song uh, you find uh, uh, in one generation you find tms going ullam enbadamai adil unmai enbadumai so the song is there it sounds like it's a fantastic song it has fantastic kannadasan words but the song sounds like it's at a remove like like you're listening to god speaking to you or you know like like something is 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 like you know like you're getting a special lesson and wow this is amazing but it's coming from a different space whereas when you listen to the same msv kannadasan spb combo you're getting this casual song angum ingum paadai undu ingu nee endha pakkam it's a philosophical song but it's like wow i'm i'm like sharing a drink with a friend and having this these these kind of existential thoughts it doesn't sound like like something heavy from another thing right and again if i have to keep repeating this because when i say heavy uh, you know uh, uh, inaccessible i don't mean like you know i'm not comparing at all because i adore tms you know it's like it's he's one of the the greatest greatest singers of tamil cinema but but i'm saying what the difference is right because now a philosophical song from the same combination of lyricist uh, a music director and uh, 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 and one singer is kind of sounding this way this singer is sounding this way so what you say it becomes easier for the listener to feel and to emulate that that's like amazing ajay sabrish says spb's rendition of shankara varanam attracted some controversy since several carnatic musicians felt the importance given to raga was reduced however i felt his rendition to be soothing and melodious what is your take on this see this is always going to be a controversial point between purists and uh, and uh, think like did spb bring out uh, the 100% purity of ragas in shankarabharanam i would say no but then that film is also like a light kind of movie so the fact that spb did 90% of what 100% should be is, is amazing and 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 the qualities that you mention soothing melodious those are very important qualities because you put a semanguri srinivasa here or a narikuri ramajayangar on screen uh, you make them play back people will run away because that that kind of purity or purism you cannot uh, that cannot be film music you know film music is a very different kind of thing so i think we should not be as snobbish and and, and then they say that uh, you know that that this is not 100% pure or or it's 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 a little light music you know it's not as fantastic as as you know x person would have sung it i think no because when you look at later uh, when when uh, to give an example when uni krishnan sings yennavale right for me personally speaking i love uni krishnan's voice but for yennavale it sounds a little too classical you know i would have loved to see an svb sing that song because it's a it's a lovely beautiful love song and somehow when unikrishan sings it there's a carnaticness that flows through it that kind of makes it a little bit like i don't know bring the song down for me a little uh, without kind of uh, you know uh, whereas an spb might have lifted the song so i think everybody has their strengths and everybody has their thing was spb a 100% pure carnatic singer no is that important though no uh, manisha says songs in the movie mayuri are enough to understand his ability as a composer i would also add seek out this raji movie called tudikum karangal uh, in which spb uh, composed all the songs really nice variety i mean you can make out a bit of ele raja a bit of msv you can make out all the influences that he's had uh, and kind of combining into a very very varied palette of songs uh, which is like i think just 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 check out those songs there's one classical kind of song like sandanam poosa manjan nilavum and there is one kind of very very fun rajni song that goes bali bambada the punjo like so it's like this this big synth 
things are happening there and it's kind of uh, really, really fun and it's really nice. DD asks, asks a really, really interesting question. We don't have singers anymore whose voice is so prominent that you could identify from the song instantly. SPB feels like one of those last few legendary voices. You know, I've always wondered about this because uh, I, I think one of the reasons is also SPB sounded like SPB in all his songs, right? But today, because, uh, you know, already in the Le Raja era, we're getting to a kind of point where uh, the voice is one of the many instruments, right? From the from the pre Le Raja era, where the voice was, people composed especially for the voice. But post uh, Le Raja, when you get all this Rahmanesque uh, technology kind of happening, people are becoming curious about, okay, you know, let me change the tonality of this voice. Let me kind of this thing, right? So that, that makes me, like, uh, I noticed this with Chinmay a uh, long time back because, the, I, I like back to this was maybe around the release of Sivaji or something like that, which is what, like 2007 ish, 2008 kind of thing. I noticed that there were about three or four songs of Chinmay's where she sounded so different. I was like, wow, this is Chinmay, this is also Chinmay, this is also Chinmay, this is also Chinmay. I think Guru also came out around the same time. And I was like, wow, that's that's kind of, you know, so the people are, there is a certain tweaking that's going on because they want the voice tonality you know it's like how you kind of you know up the reverb lower the bass when you're listening to a song because you want it a certain way they're also people are also beginning to play with the voice and i think a price that that singers played for this is that they they lost that 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 earlier generation which is i think the last generation that was spb s janaki sushila uh, chitra uh, Yeshadas, this this whole generation probably was was the last kind of generation where uh, you know you had that hundred percent their own voice was there on screen, and after that you kind of have this uh, you know like uh, which is not to say that there are later songs where you can't identify the voices at all, but but that standard is kind of you know it goes up and down in the kind of the vo vocal quality. Suddenly you're thinking, wow, this sounds like this person, but maybe it's actually that person, and then you look at the the credits and it's like it's actually that person because you know the the, the individuality that that the voice also becomes something that like the other instruments you can tweak and uh, again no good or bad or any of that kind of stuff is happening judgment is happening here i'm just saying that is probably one of the reasons why we don't get that feel when we hear a song uh, without wax says spb was the leading voice in hindi cinema for a brief period in the late 80s and early 90s what could be the reason for him not getting continued success I don't know if he was the leading voice, you know, it's like I think he had a bunch of hits with Salman and earlier with Kamal and all that. In the Kamal phase, for example, you have Kishore, uh, who's still going on till about 85. And uh, and uh, in the uh, in the uh, in in this phase also, you're having other singers coming in. Uh, so in the in the late 80s, early 90s, you have Udit Narayan coming in, you have Kumar Sanu coming in. So I don't know if SPB was the leading singer, but yeah, with Salman, there was a bond form because, you know, like once uh, Mene Parkia happened and that, that, that kind of, you know, cements a singer and a, 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 a performer. And I think that went on for a while. So I think he enjoyed good success. But imagine this guy is flying across the country singing in like X number of languages. So it's like, I don't think it's possible to sit in one language and, and kind of try to monopolize that. Uh, for example, if you ask me, if, if SPB was the leading singer in Tamil cinema, I don't know if I'd be able to answer that question easily because at one point, Vila Raja was using in the 80s, right? In the, Vila Raja was using SPB and Manisha Vasudevan and uh, Yesu Das for all his hits. So I would say, was SPB dominant? I don't know because Yesu Das was getting as many songs, right? It's like, I don't know if, if like, but, but he was at the top, at the top of all these industries. But I'm just trying to say, was he like any one guy was over everybody else? No, and I don't, when I look back at Indian film music itself, I doubt that there has been any one singer who's always been at the top. If you have a Kishore, you have a Rafi. Now, I'm not talking about whether you like Kishore or you like Rafi, right? But I'm saying at any given point, there are always these two people because I think it's physically inhuman for one person to just be at the top because of the sheer number of songs that are produced and to say that I have sung, you know, this many songs uh, at one kind of thing. Of course, SPV has a phenomenal number of songs across all languages, which makes it's really inhuman how we manage to do that. But, but like, I mean, the man is a god. Just for that number alone, he's a god. So, like, but, but, at any given point, was he ruling any one industry? I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm finding it difficult to say because it's like uh, in Tamil, at least, I don't know if he was like the number one singer uh, at any given point as much as the top singer among the top 
kind of a thing. Just like if you take the female singers in the 80s, there was Sushila, there was Janaki, right? Both of them are there. Then there's Janaki and there's Chitra. So there's like always, you know, kind of a thing. So if somebody actually goes back and does a, a physical count, maybe kind of thing. But I'm doing a perception thing where when I think of the 80s, I not only think of SPB, I also think of uh, Yesh Das because Lele Raja used them both very, very uh, widely. Uh, Vivan Sundar says his rendition style and diction have never seen SPB overact and be loud while acting. Do you think that's why singing was so to the point and so nuanced? Nanda Yenila, Ido Ido and Pallavi, Megam Kottatum, Nan Padu Maunaragam, etc. Tenet and Pandi Mine and all that. Uh, his singing was nuanced, right? Because, you know, he had these great music directors who kind of like MSV and then Yale Raja, who kind of knew exactly what they wanted uh, out of him. And they were able to extract kind of a thing, uh, what they wanted from him. So a singer is like an actor. See, on screen, right, what registers is what the actor does on screen, right? That is what registers first. But is that actor's performance due to the actor's own instincts or did the director uh, kind of say, do this, do that, do this a little lower, do that a little higher, bring that emotion a little kind of to the side? How did that happen, right? We don't know that, that process. Similarly, when we are listening to music, the singer is the actor. The singer is the voice that comes to us. The singer is the one that, that we respond to. But did the uh, Nanda Niyanila, right? It's a, it's an amazing song, right? But how much of it is SPB's uh, own thing and how much of it is Dakshinamurti sir's uh, uh, composition? We don't know. So that kind of thing, and it frankly doesn't interest me also because all that matters is this is a great composition and it's made greater by the singing, by SPB singing. And that's really, really the most amazing thing. Sai Krishna Ramavajala says, what's your thought on his voice and singing that suits actors of all ages? He's able to change the age of his voice. You know, that is one of the gifts, right? You, whether you, you know, if you believe in God, you'll say it's divine gift. If you say, believe in nature, you'd say genetics made him this way. But to get a voice like this in that respect, SPB was truly unique, right? There has never been a singer like him in, as far as I know, in Indian cinema whose voice from start to finish remained the same. When I say remain the same, yes, early on his voice sounded young and later on his voice sounded like mature, right? And the bass was, became deeper and deeper, but he never went uh, off pitch. Uh, it never became shrieky. It never became like, like you know, he's unable to reach a certain pitch. Uh, he's not, he, he, he can only, uh, you know, do the lower ranges and all that. No, because it's like when you listen to uh, uh, the way he says, Mandin me the money than a car say, he's like, I don't know how, he must be in his 60s, right? Like, listen to him belting out that bloody song. My God, it's 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 like, you know, thinking about it gives me goose flesh right now. So it's like... Uh, it, that, that way the man was truly, truly amazing because he had that voice and uh, it remained his companion till the end. Even when he was doing those Simply SPB episodes on YouTube, that voice is still that voice. And I think that's really, really fantastic. I don't know who this question came from. I think it's from Instagram, but it says SPB has been the soul of Tamil cinema. At the end, it says, in your opinion, what is the best example set by SPB that should be followed by current generation singer to sustain in this industry? Uh... I don't know, each one of us will take away different lessons, right? For me, uh, uh, because I'm a writer, I think one of the best things that I take away from somebody like SPB is never stop working, right? I mean, unless you want to retire and go away, meaning that till you want to remain or practice this skill of yours, you have to give it your everything on every given day some days it may work some days it may not but you have to keep at it and this is what i take away from it he in his career he was like working every single day sometimes you know four songs five songs this is you know these insane records that he has that you know he sang x number of songs in a day and all that kind of stuff the point is it's not enough if you love what you do right it's important to give yourself over to what you do. And I think it's, 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 that's something that I really take away from people like SPB is that it's not enough to say I have a passion, I want to do this, I want to do that. No, it's a commitment. It's like you have this thing and you have to give it your all. And, uh, uh, you know, I think that's, that's something that, that really 
is, is this blinding lesson that I get from such people. Uh, Nitya asks, uh, we don't hear a lot about how SPB's voice was initially considered immature to sing for a hero, which you reconstructed to now becoming the singular definition of a hero's voice. Any insights into who helped him in his metamorphosis? Uh, see, I think part of it is just, uh, you know, the aging process, right? It's like, it's like when you listen to SPB late 60s to rough, like, I don't know, 73, 74, 75, uh, it, it sounds like a younger person's voice. So when you see Sivakumar acting to uh, uh, Sindh Devanam, that's like a perfect fit. It really sounds uh, uh, like a really nice, because Sivakumar himself is so young, right? But somehow that voice doesn't sit on an MGR, right? Uh, but but I think it's just a simple question of his, you know, his voice. Uh, he must have done some vocal exercises. And of, of course, MSV was there, like giving him very difficult songs to sing, very voice oriented songs to sing you know what i mean by that is it's not like the voice like you take sinatra right uh sinatra is a voice or ella, ella fitzgerald people like these now they are voices because of what is called phrasing right how do they phrase out the words right so sometimes they will they will say the same word within two beats sometimes it will be four beats so the reason they do that is because they each time a different emotion comes through, right? Whether we want to call it Sangati or whatever, let's not get into the te technical terms. What I'm saying is that phrasing, let's keep it simple, an English word, that phrasing is very important for a singer, right? So kind of, to kind of be able to do that, uh, a classic example, which a lot of people uh, cite today is Yenakuru Kadali Irikindral. So it's like, a, it's like an MSV song. Uh, and it's, it's, it, it's a classic example of how a song a singer should phrase a song under the instructions of the music director it's like that phrasing is so precise and so beautiful that you feel that 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 duet that's happening between msv and svv is is so is so like 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 it's it's something from heaven you know it's, it's so amazing and once that you get that 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 training in phrasing and things like that you kind of become confident to uh, it's a bit like learning music right at first you are just learning the basics that is the seven notes and things like that and then once once your teacher tries kind of pushes you pushes you pushes you you kind of your own instinct combined with your teacher's training combined with the listening that you're doing and all that kind of stuff you know comes into one and becomes your own thing and that is what happens here with any singer but with spb i think because there, there was this lot of grooming that's happening uh, with msv i know one thing I keep doing is saying MSV's name because SVB songs that are probably remembered more now are Yelera songs, right? Because that's the, the uh, like the 2K kids or whatever you want to call yourself, this kind of a thing. But you cannot underestimate MS Vishwanathan's contribution to creating SVB as a singer because those crooning songs, they are really like whether you listen to Van Nila, Nila, whether you listen to this, Yanakuru uh, Kadali, Kindral, so many, so many, so many songs. And it's like they were all hits, like they were all uh, Vijay Bhaskar, V Kumar, all these people to a lesser extent, but with mainly because of MSV, because the number of songs was was so many. Uh, you just find hit after hit after hit coming in in this in this wonderful crooning style, uh, which is like uh, something that even MSV doesn't do as much earlier with TMS, right? There's a little bit of a like a like a i don't want to say rigidity because that sounds like a bad word but when you look at the msv ramamurthy songs there's something else that's happening uh with kind of a uh, you know with the pbs songs there's a little more free-flowing kind of thing whereas here uh, you kind of uh, uh, you really really have that uh, uh that that freedom that SPB has to discover his voice arvind Sridhar says this legend will be remembered forever and ever yes uh, what are your favorite songs from SPB Sir's discography? Can you suggest some underrated numbers that even his ardent fans might have missed? Uh, hey, I think I'm an ardent fan and I'm sure even I missed a whole bunch of songs. But uh, from, uh, you know, if you're looking for older songs, I would say go before 85, right? Because I think uh, from the time people like Maniratnam and all come in, uh, that whole uh, SPB, Raja, Maniratnam, that Nilaveva, that whole set of songs, uh, then you have SVB, Rahman, Shankar. So that, that, that whole, you know, those sets of songs are so entrenched in our minds that, that you don't need to like kind of uh, be, remind people of them anymore because those are all like canonical songs. Sundari Karnal or Risaidi, like 9 out of 10 people have heard. You don't have to keep recommending them. But I would say go out and seek out, uh, 
I don't know. I mean, you might have listened to these, but uh, there is this uh, movie called Ananda Kuli, which Elaraja produced, and it was like a stink bomb of the highest order, but glorious, glorious songs. And uh, there is a song that uh, that goes, Tamare Kodi. It's like a, a amazing, amazing song. It's like an SPB's voice combined with Elaraja's guitars. Oh my God, that that song is mind blowing. Uh, go to a uh, non padum padal and discover. Uh, uh, Padum Vanam Badi, that's another song. Padum Vanam Badi. Ha. So that's another uh, lovely song. Uh, there is Go Back to MSV if you want and, and discover. Oh my God, how can I forget this? Nineta uh, Lenikum. Listen to the songs of that, uh, of that song, that, 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 that great album of, of uh, you know, SPB and uh, MSV. Nineta Lenikum. Uh, all the all the songs, Bharati Karnama, uh, you know, uh, 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 so many so many songs in that movie. Like uh, you know, it's like uh, even that humming song with Nineta Lenikum that uh, uh, that's so amazing. Uh, uh, then of course go back to uh, the earlier songs. Go to uh, V Kumar. Go to uh, there are so many. You know, Google is your friend. You know, just say. Uh, uh, SPB discography or whatever they call it these days and go back and, and just listen to all these songs. I'm saying give it a listen, right? You're saying you like SPB. Go back beyond the mid 80s onwards and go back and discover. Say you're saying that you like this guy. See what he sang earlier, right? Like let's see what he sang in 75. Let's see what he sang in 70. You don't have to like those songs, but just listen to it at least once for SPB's sake. You might end up uh, liking a uh, song uh, you know, that, that you would not have thought uh, would like uh, sing. But if, if I... If I have to choose one uh, uh, SVB song over all others, it would be uh, that Nanda Ni and Nila because it's like uh, Nanda Ni and Nila, Nila. That like uh, that for a for a for a that ragam itself is a fantastic one of my favorite ragams, Madhuvanti. It's like wine, you know, and it's actually the it's amazing how during a very short period in the 70s you have three people giving three very very uh, distinctive shades to Madhuvanti so uh, um, uh, uh, Dakshina Muti sir gives uh, Nandani Anila uh, MSV gives you hello my dear wrong number so he gives you that and uh, Ila Raja gives you Yenulu uh, Liedo in uh, Rosa Pura Ravi Kari, which is magnificent I mean Vani Jaram kills 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 that song it's like an amazing amazing song so, um, but anyway, that song is is uh, uh, is an amazing uh, kind of a thing, and uh, I want to thank SPB for one thing because you know I I I'm usually a bathroom singer and I usually am not like one for singing uh, in public and for some reason today I just felt like humming those songs uh, even with my voice because I just kind of felt that that just saying the names of some of the songs would not be enough that I would have to just kind of you know kind of uh, in my own way, like like one of these people, uh, one of the people here asked this question for for, for listeners to uh, feel and emulate. You know that it makes you do that. And right now, I'm in an emulating kind of frame of mind. Uh, whether you think it's a bad thing or a good thing, I leave to you. But uh, it made me do that. It made me feel the music. You know. Uh, so thank you all for tuning in to this special episode. Um, and and we can do like innumerable number of episodes like this on SVB. But uh, you know, just go seek out his earlier songs because you know you you're saying that you don't want them to be forgotten. Uh, the 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 Shankar songs, the Maniratnam songs, the you know those will never be forgotten because the movies themselves take care of that but go back to the earlier ones where you have these stink bomb movies uh, these terrible terrible actors these bad production values these bad directors and discover the songs from it because those are the only things that are really really worthwhile and and uh, uh, see those songs cherish those songs and remember SPB not just through the popular numbers but also through the ones that somehow slip through the cracks and are still very very great thank you all for listening and see you in the next episode of Aspia.